Seth. We're joined now by Didier Morais in New York City. He's a sports journalist. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. As we saw in Jim's piece, U.S. and Swiss authorities investigating the awarding of the 2018 World Cup to Russia. Russia says it's complied with all the rules during the bidding process. Could FIFA really take away the World Cup from Russia, especially this far along? And how could that play out? Well, it's funny because I don't think we're as far as along as it actually seems. I mean, part of the reason why they award countries World Cup so far in advance is to ensure the fact that these countries can have the resources to be able to host these World Cups, and that includes constructing uh, stadiums for the World Cup, constructing hotels to accommodate these tourists. So I know we're currently in the investigation. There's obviously the U.S. investigation and the Swiss investigation. However, the closer we draw to 2018, the tougher it'll be to remove this bid from Russia, because at this point, they've invested so many resources. And to do a revote and to make the selection, it'd be very tough in a tight turnaround. That said, however, there are some bigger countries that are equipped for this in case there needs to be a revote on a tight turnaround. And it's countries like the United States, Portugal and Spain, or even England, who could be the ones chosen if that happens. Wouldn't it look bad, though, if it came to the United States since they're behind this whole investigation? I'm sorry. Well, I mean, I'm wouldn't, sorry, wouldn't I, it look bad if it, if it came, if, if the game actually did come to the United States, given the fact that they're kind of leading this investigation? Well, obviously, there, there's certainly a lot of anger right now just from FIFA in general to the United States. I mean, even Sepp Blatter, he's one of those that if you're loyal to him, he will have your back. But if you're one of those that have turned your back against him, he obviously won't support you. And we already know that uh, Sunil Jalati from the U.S., obviously, he voted for Prince Ali when those votes came around. So it, would, it wouldn't really be out of the realm to think that it could happen, but somebody like Portugal and, and Spain, who kind of sent their co-bids together in, in 2010 and were the runner-ups to Russia, I mean, those could obviously be an a ideal option for FIFA. Let me talk to you about uh, Qatar, because uh, as you mentioned, uh, they're also being looked into. And of course, you were saying there's still a window with, uh, with uh, Russia. This game would be in 2022. There's been so many issues about migrant workers dying, uh, constructing these uh, stadiums. There have been a lot of questions about this bidding process. How about the potential that they might lose the 2022 World Cup? I think that could be a little more realistic because we have a little more wiggle room because that is seven years away. And already we're hearing the complaints about the fact that a World Cup potentially, you know, being in, in December, I mean, that's something nobody's accustomed to. But even, as you said, some of the migrant workers, or even just some, some of the cultural controversies, I mean, right now, obviously, that's part of the reason there, there is such a firestorm around warding the bid to Qatar. So that could be more realistic given the fact that there is more time to make those revotes and those changes. Today, thanks so much uh, for joining us from New York. Certainly appreciate your analysis. Uh, we'll obviously be talking to you again because this story is not going away. Thank you.